Hello, this is Malorian, and what this video will be here is just kind of my final thoughts on the Out of the Basement Open Tournament. Just really what I, I thought of the tournament, the way it was run, uh, the, the armies that were there, and then really breaking down my own performance and what I thought of the different units that I took. And while I'm doing this, you during the lunch time is when you're supposed to be doing the whole uh, betting on who you thought was going to win best painted. And what they did for this one was actually pick the top three that were brought away. So a lot of people did still display their own armies off on their own tables to show them off. Some of them didn't, but I did my best to go around and take pictures of them. Just so you guys can see, you know, the nicely painted armies and just really the spread of the, the armies that were there. Some of them were packed away and I couldn't get them or some of them were all jumbled together, but I did the best I could. <clears throat> so, first of all, what did I think about the tournament? I thought it was a, a very well-run tournament, lots of fun, uh, went very smooth. This is a type of tournament where they're running Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40k, and War Machine, and everything went very smooth. You know, they're, they're announcing one set of matchups for one, 15 minutes, one for another, and 15 minutes, of one for another one, and it just... It was no problems whatsoever. There's been ones in the past where it was a little bit sketchy and people were yelling over people and stuff. When this one, it went extremely well. Uh, one thing that was kind of funny to learn was that after we left, uh, I was hearing about all the troubles they had actually putting this together. That was actually a nightmare for them where they almost didn't have the venue booked and all this stuff a, a couple of days before the event. But really, from somebody on the inside not knowing this in the back, it was just... Everybody had lots of fun, and I didn't see any complaints whatsoever, except for one thing, which was one on terrain. I guess it was a, a lot more on the 40k side, where th a lot of times, unless you brought your own cover, it wasn't really there. But that's, I guess, something you can even say for that, where for 40k, for those that even care, you can actually use some of your points to go towards buying terrain, whether it's actually a, a fortified tower or uh, a a wall line or actually a complete fortress you can actually buy these things and so that's something that as a tournament organizer you have to remember that no matter what terrain you can put down you have to remember there could be actually more terrain added for the fantasy side I actually didn't think it was too bad obviously it was a far less than uh, you would normally see because of course the average would be seven or eight pieces of terrain but again like I, I say in some of my other reports that even though you have all this terrain there's a lot of things that don't affect the bottle like the fences or the hills and stuff and usually the things that are big that people don't like to see they just push to the side anyway so I think for a normal type of game this is what you normally saw anyway um, it, one of the things that they could probably do I mean the really polar opposite might be the Calgary tournaments where they had lots of terrain and lots of it was impassable and something that maybe both of them could do is kind of a mix so not only could you do something where there's say well what you could really do is have a couple of tables that are heavy on terrain a couple of t tables that are light on terrain and then have a spectrum going across I mean you don't really need to have that oh this is the tournament with hardly any terrain and this is the tournament with tons of terrain uh, either way Talking to the organizers, what it is is the fact that you know there's they're just a gaming group and they're still building up their the, the amount that they actually have. But the good news I heard is that they plan to paint and get ready a bunch more. So you know th we'll see what they do with that. But the way it is, I mean, I'm a horde player and I'm happy with it being fairly open. So uh, there you have that. Uh, something with the missions, just talking on that, it was nice to see that they brought in things from the book and then gave it its own flavor. I think there's a little bit of stuff that they could do and go and change with it. I'd say the first one is where they start with Blood and Glory. Now, Blood and Glory is a very important mission to have as it really forces you to have units with banners and if you're a person that says you know what I'm just going to take three units or something like that you have to really worry that all the other army needs to do is throw everything at killing your general one model you know and you win the game so it really kind of helps people who have to take more units with more banners to make sure that their general does die to even something like a dimensional cascade you don't just lose the game uh, I had one friend at the tournament that was running a brand new dark elf army and for the most part it was all these little dark riders going around and then a couple of characters on a pegasus well I guess first turn there's an amber spear hits his pegasus he dies boom game is done in no time whatsoever but that's just one of the risks you run when you're doing an army like that but uh, something that 
they might want to do, even though it's nice to have here, is the whole thing where it should not be first. Uh, something going into a tournament is always when you have your first round matchup, you never know what you're actually going to be up against. You know, you could you could draw a strong player, you could draw a new player, you never know. But the thing is, is that usually by the second game, it's actually more balanced out because the people that go in there and get massacres, they'll be paired up against each other and the people that just have, you know, minor wins will be against each other. But with Blood and Glory, it's for the most part, Everybody gets a Massacre win or a Massacre loss. So even though you really divide the group in two, you still have the whole things where maybe somebody just got lucky with uh, winning the Blood and Glory. They get a Massacre win, and all of a sudden they're against a guy that has a very extremely competitive army, and they get crushed. So you don't really know then in the second group. It's not as stratified. So something they might want to do is take the same mission, but move it to the last game. Because once you're there, the pairing is done anyway. And the nice thing from a tournament organizer point of view is that the games end early, that's a good thing because then people can get ready to go home or just go home and you know, or help take down tables, all that stuff. You know, that's nicer to have your last game being the one that can end early. Uh, another mission I really wanted to comment on was the one with the change to the dawn attack, and I love that change. I mean, it's something where if you really look at it, the odds of me having my general on one flank and my troll horde being forced to the opposite flank is like a 1 in 36 type chance type thing, right? But the main thing is that it does happen and it, it sucks to have games where you're really behind the ball right from deployment. And so something like this where if you do have units that are meant to be together, you can have them together, you just don't know in which of those three zones are going to be in. So I really like that the same idea is there where you can't really go and completely plan out your entire formation. It's going to be jumbled up a little bit, but it's nothing where you're going to be really screwed because of it. Say, like, even say if you're an engineer, right, your war machines are going to be in one zone, your engineer that's supposed to be running them is somewhere way off, and it's just, that's just the way the dice did it. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the tournament itself and the missions. Um, no real complaints on the way things were scored or anything like that. Um, all the rest was, was, was pretty good. I guess the next thing then was to talk about my own performance. Uh, in the end of the day, I got two Massacre wins, one Massacre loss, and a minor loss. And I mean, I always try and aim to win more than I lose. Obviously, I failed that. But the main thing with me looking back is that in every single one of my games, I felt like I had a very good chance to win the game. Sometimes I was right, and sometimes I was proved wrong, but... I think that's a really big part of me actually having the chaff in there and also the war machines because it gave me a lot of more tactical options where normally it'd be like, can I just overpower my opponent? Yes, no. Okay, if it's yes, just push things forward. If it's no, I might have to try and be a little bit tricky, but my options are very limited. In this case, with having all the chaff, where I could even be doing double fleas with my two wolf rider units, all of a sudden that opened up so much to me. I mean, really, like if you look at my normal type of build, where it's just three or four or whatever, just everything hordes, if coming into that last game would just be really be just, okay, can this horde beat that horde? What are the matchups? But with all the chaff out there, I was able, well, with the chaff that I thought I would have, I'd be able to go and actually control the movement phase. So I really like this. This is kind of the first time in a long time that I, I really moved in a lot more chaff and war machines, and I really did like it. One of the things I was actually kind of thinking, though, even in the end, is that looking back on how my first and third game went, where I was a massacre win, I almost thought if I even needed to scale back my list a little bit more, where I took out some of these really big hordes and put in things a little bit more fun. I mean, it's one of those things where I, I've been always thinking about this, and I, I've already come to the decision that no, friendly games is fun time, and tournament time is tournament time, but... Uh, you know, it's always one of those things where you feel bad, where you get to the end of the game, and you have something like that Orcs and Goblins versus the High Elf one, where it was just a bad matchup for him, and you just crush him. And especially when it's a nice guy, it's been nice if, you know what, if that was the game where I had my Giant, and I had my Super Orc or something. But either way, I mean, going forward, I'm sure I'm not going to bring fluffy little bunny armies to a tournament unless it's actually built like that. It's just one of those things that lingers at you, and makes you wish, like, oh man, I should have been a little bit nicer to him. So... Uh, also looking at how I did, right now the results aren't out, but I'm sure with the way it went, I'm sure my painting scores were average or maybe even a little bit below. There were a lot of very good looking armies out there. Um, 
the other thing there too was the sportsmanship, where I'm not really sure how I placed with that. I was hoping to be, say, like in the top third or something, but again, there's so many nice players out there, and the thing is too is the way that it's scored, where it was a, a score out of five, where one was like amazing game, let's be friends right away, and uh, you know, a four was a great game, and three was good game. So I'm sure that a lot of people scored fours. I mean, I'd say the vast majority of the time, you're probably scoring the game a four, and it's just if you have a bad game is going to a three maybe a two so the way that goes I mean of course the the one thing that modifies that is at the end of the tournament you vote for your favorite player uh, that was you know you had your most fun game with but uh, even with that I mean there's so many more people out there that are, are just a blast to play with I mean I always try and be funny and you know have light-hearted games and all this stuff but man I mean there's a lot of people in this uh, meta here that are just really fun to play with so it's always something that's a very uh, a hard contested uh, kind of it's one of those funny things where sometimes it's like oh boy who's going to win best general and around here it's like oh boy who's actually going to win best sportsman because you really know who's don't know who's going to come down to because there's so many fun players whereas I mean in this case the one who won best general was a lizardman player where coming into it I would have said like you know he stands a very good chance of winning this it wasn't something where it's way up in the air it's somebody where okay he's a very strong player and uh, he has a very strong army and it's probably going to go his way so that's pretty much my part there uh, something else I can talk about is about how I completely misjudged the meta coming into this I really expected with that with all the skull crushers I would see a lot of warriors of chaos armies and I did see some of them of course some of them being my typical opponents but the thing is is that I thought I'd be seeing lots of them and very little vampire counts because these guys just go and kill off their ethereal and kill off them and they'd be in a bad spot but there was lots and lots of vampire counts it was amazing actually a vampire count player uh, won the entire thing and actually he uh, he's a Calgary guy he makes his own battle reports so uh, once he posts them up maybe I'll, I'll put up a, a link here to his thread just so you guys can check out his things but uh, yeah well I mean talk about completely misjudging the meta there um, but I mean that's just the way it goes these things happen you you make a guess and sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong uh, getting to my army just a breakdown of all the different units and you know how I think they actually did uh, first of all my my level four with the scroll he did fine uh, I can't think of anything bad he ever did it was really the dice that would mean that sometimes I just couldn't roll a 14 on six dice but you know he was he did his normal thing where he was there and uh, I had the leadership banner on my Night Goblin BSB, but actually that never up really came into uh, play. His leadership 8 was almost always enough. A lot of times I'd even, even have the two characters together. And even though I was thinking it'd be really nice for me to get the Fencer's Blades on him, again, that almost never came up. The times when I did charge into combat with my Black Orcs, I did it so that he was out of combat, so that, you know, if he ever issued a challenge, I'd just go to the back. So it really wasn't even a problem. Of course, that's also limiting at uh, 1,800 points, and so as these tournaments get bigger, I'll be adding in things like the Fencer's Blades to keep him safe. But I really liked how it worked, actually, where it was only the ones where I had him back in the bunker to try and avoid me losing losing my sixes, uh, that I just kept him in the black orcs for the most part, and I didn't have to worry about losing my uh, animosity magic phase type thing. So, you know, he's always great. Uh, going on to my Night Goblin BSB, as I already touched on, I always give him the leadership banner, especially when I take a level four, but this made me think that I shouldn't be doing that anymore. I mean, it's, it's 15 points only, but like I was saying, now that I put my level four with my black orcs the vast majority of the time, why do I even bother? I mean, that would be 15 points towards the 35 going for the fencer blades. I could just keep them extremely cheap and just don't even bother with that. So that's probably the only change I'll be going with him. Uh, going on to my core, Savage Orc, Biggins. Man, I mean, what's not to change there? Uh, I've, I'm still not tempted to put in a champ or a musician. The banner's all they need. And yeah, no real worries there. Uh, then I have my... My, my Night Goblin Bunker, uh, this time I had to go with the shields rather than the short bows because of the limitations put on me, and really it didn't make any difference. I mean, really the way that you arm them almost never comes up. Uh, I think, if anything, in, when they were being shot by some of the Skinks in that game, it was nice to have shields, but that was pretty much it. You know, they're a bunker, they did their job. Uh, the Wolf Riders, 
they were nice to have. Uh, one of the things that was kind of interesting to see is that if I compare the two units, I'm paying five more points for the unit that has short bows and spears than the, the unit with shields, and I feel that I got more out of the unit for shields. I mean, having that four plus armor just does so much more for me than having the five little shots, but I mean, who knows? I mean, if I go up against something with fanatics or scaven with weapon teams, all of a sudden those little five shots could be really paying for me. So going forward, uh, like I was talking about before, it's really nice to have these throwaway units that, unlike the troll, the troll can't flee, but these guys can go up, and having the two units means that I can pull off a double flee that can not only take away their charge, but really force them to be going off to one flank and allowing me to, to flank them pretty much with another unit. So I really like having them in there, and I mean, this is 1800, so I mean, especially when I get larger in these other games, why wouldn't I have them again? Uh, going on to special, going to the Black Orcs, I was actually, one of the things I was kind of feeling, well, first of all, they had the plus one movement banner, and <laughs> because of rolls, I kept on failing charges and stuff, but that's not really that their fault. One of the things I was actually seeing a lot more of was a lot more things with the, the regen. Uh, the, as I said, there was the one player there with double Hydra, and if in the meta, all of a sudden I start seeing a lot more of that stuff again with the regen, because maybe other people are starting to phase out their flaming banners, I'll have to put it back in. But for now, I'm still liking the plus one movement banner. Uh, the other thing there, too, is my special would be my chariots. Those boar chariots, I love them. I mean, one of the things is with the wolf chariots, you have to always kind of compare that. Uh, a wolf chariot is 50 points, a boar chariot is 85, so I mean, you got another f 35 points right there. But the thing is that that toughness 5 and the, the better armor and the more wounds is always so, so big. I mean, when I'm being shot up by archers and he's needing 6 of the wounds to wound me, that's just amazing. Uh, the other thing too is whenever you're charging and you have the four strength five attacks rather than just some strength threes and a couple of strength fours for having spears, that also makes a big deal and lets you do things like where I went and assassinated his one skink priest so that he couldn't be laser beaming me and stuff anymore. Uh, past that, I mean, I have my, my single troll. Single troll always does awesome. He does his job here too. He's 35 points. Would you, why would you not take him? Uh, then going on to my other stuff, I have my two Doom Divers. Uh, I really thought going into this I would be regretting not having a Stone Lava or Rock Lava, but the big thing is it never came up. I never really did face one of those monsters, so it never was an issue. Uh, sure, I, I did face some of the troops that it could have been nice to use on, but really the Doom Divers did a lot more for me. Where I was fighting the, the little units of the... Uh, sword masters or when I was up against the knights and stuff like that they're just really nice to have plus they're very reliable and even when they scatter you have a very good chance of veering back and hitting whatever you wanted to hit so overall where even though I was coming in and saying I really did not my li like my list now that I actually played it I liked it a lot more and I'm actually interested to see what I'd be doing with my list when I go to these larger tournaments say you know when I get to go to 2250 or 2500 or something about how I'd scale up not only getting another horde but also more chaff as well and you know maybe with that chaff I mean throwing in something like a super orc or you know something like that too because at that point he's kind of something where you know if you're going with more of this type of a, a list you can play more of those things but we'll see how it goes either way uh thanks for watching all those reports and please leave any comments of how you how you think you would change my list and uh, what you think I should be planning for the future for making changes. So thanks and there you go. Bye.